I don't think I need to tell you that this specific video could be stretched out to many, many separate parts. Seeing as Dragon Ball is one, if not the most famous and recognizable anime series in the world, references toward it are not that difficult to find. Though while it would allow me to make somewhere around like 10 separate parts, I feel doing that will cause the videos to eventually become stale, as a lot of the references that you find towards the series are more or less the same. Nevertheless, I know there are a few of you out there who wouldn't mind I make a couple more videos on the topic. So what I've decided to do is make this one the video you're watching right now, just like my usual hidden references video, pointing out 10 of the ones I consider to be most interesting. Then later on I may make one or two more where I just quickly go over the different shows, movies, songs, etc that have references to Dragon Ball in them. So yeah, look forward to that and let's get this countdown started. Number 10, Watamote. So in this series, we follow 15-year-old Tomoko Kuroki, a high school girl who's desperately trying to become popular. Now, Tomoko is someone with a pretty extreme case of anxiety, which has caused her to struggle a lot in her life. She has a really hard time holding a conversation with pretty much anyone who isn't immediate family. So in a nutshell, the whole series is basically just about her getting into some really weird situations, much like in episode two, which is where the reference takes place. While she's sitting in class eating her lunch, she begins to delve into some pretty erotic fantasy in order to help sound out the noise of her classmates around her. In one of the scenes, she is shown curled up in the crater, which mimics the death of Yamsha at the hand of a Cyberman. Get it? Hand? Haha? <laughs> no? Okay, I'll show myself out. Also, I found this out pretty late in making this video, but there's actually another version of this in episode 5. Stress would leave me looking like that white kid from a ch or I'd be barraged by so much feminine charm that one wrong move could kill me. Number nine, Pokemon. So for this one, we're actually going to be going over two different instances which can be found in Pokemon games. The first of which can be found in Pokemon X and Y. In the games, there is a psychic trainer found on Route 10, which, like every other trainer you meet on your journey, challenges you to a battle. Once you defeat him, he compliments you and your team, stating that your Pokemon's power levels are over 9,000. I don't really think this one needs too much explaining, as everyone watching this video probably already knows about this iconic meme. The second reference can be found in both Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. After defeating the Pokemon League in either game, you unlock the Delta episode, which itself is one giant Dragon Ball Z reference. In the episode, it is explained that the character Xenia has a plan to gather seven keystones, which she wants to use in order to summon a legendary green dragon that can grant her a wish. Sound familiar? The seven keystones are meant to be the seven Dragon Balls, and Rayquaza is meant to be a reference to Shenron. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to play either game myself, but at least now I have more of a reason to do so. Number 8, Naruto. Much like the last reference, this entry is going to cover two different instances Dragon Ball Z was found in Naruto. The first is actually very early in the Naruto manga, way back in chapter 150. As Naruto separates away from Jiraiya wanting to go explore the festival, he is given a limited amount of money which he is allowed to spend. As he is enjoying himself, he stops by a shop that sells face masks and ends up picking one up. If you look at the rack behind him, you can see one mask that is modeled after Chaozu from Dragon Ball. The second reference can be found in one of the Naruto video games, specifically Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. Now, if you've seen my 10 hidden references to Naruto and Naruto Shippuden video, you'll know I mentioned a special sage outfit Goku that was made available to players who pre-ordered a certain Dragon Ball Z game. Well, this is kind of the same thing in the sense that you are able to obtain a special code if you bought the game within a certain time frame. Much like the Goku one, there isn't much to the costume other than cosmetics, 
However, it does have one really cool change. When Naruto goes in to do his Rasengan, he actually uses two hands instead of one, which is meant to mimic the way Goku performs the Kamehameha wave. Since I bought this game pretty early after release, I actually managed to acquire this special character, though I have no idea if it's possible to get nowadays or if it's gone for good. Number 7. Criminal Minds Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with this TV series, but I for one have definitely watched the show quite a bit. The series follows a team of FBI agents who work to try and solve various cases and catch some serious bad guys. This team usually consists of about 7 members, with some being switched out in the later seasons. Of these 7, however, there is one that usually stays behind the scenes. Penelope is the technical analyst of the group, usually spending most of her time in the computer room relaying the team any information that they may need. Because of the amount of time she needs to spend in this room, it's no surprise she would bring a ton of personal belongings with her, which can be found scattered all over her desk. Well, in episode 23 of season 2, among all her belongings, you can actually spot figurines of Goku, Raditz, and Gotenks. After digging into this a bit more, I learned that a lot of the items that you see on her desk are actually items that belong to the show staff. Guess that means someone over there really likes Dragon Ball, but then again, is that really surprising? She needn't worry. Every day, Agent Jiro fields dozens of requests for our team, and every night she goes home hoping she's made the right choices. Garcia fills her office with figurines in color to remind herself to smile as the horror fills her screens and Agent Gip. Number 6. Yu-Gi-Oh! If there's any Yu-Gi-Oh! fans watching, I'm sure you guys probably already know about the story of Tyler the Great Warrior. Those who don't know about it, I'll quickly go over it. So back in October 2002, a 14 year old boy by the name of Tyler Grease was diagnosed with a rare form of liver cancer, called undifferentiated embryonal sarcoma. I have no idea if that's how it's pronounced, but I'm not going to try again. After he began experiencing some pain, Tyler was taken to see a doctor to find out exactly what was the cause of his discomfort. In the end, he actually had to be taken into surgery as the doctors had discovered that the pain was a result of a mass that had burst inside of him. Luckily for Tyler, the doctor that did his surgery had experience with this sort of thing, and he ended up coming out alright. Soon after his surgery, the Make-A-Wish Foundation learned of the battle that Tyler had faced and granted him one wish. His wish was to create his very own Yu-Gi-Oh card, Tyler the Warrior. This card, Tyler the Warrior, is believed to have been based on Super Saiyan Future Trunks, and though this has never been confirmed, the resemblance is undeniable. And seeing as how only one print of this card exists, it is believed to be one if not the rarest card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, with some people having offered Tyler as much as $75,000, which is crazy for one single card. Number 5. Hack a Doll Now, this anime I had never actually heard of before working on this video, but the reference is probably one of my favorite on this list. It can be found in episode 13, and what makes this one cool in my opinion is that unlike other anime or shows which only briefly reference things like a Super Saiyan, this one contains remakes of various scenes from across the Dragon Ball Z anime and even some of the movies. From Goku first turning into a Super Saiyan, to Gohan becoming a Super Saiyan 2. Now it would take too long to go through and explain where each one comes from as the reference is almost 2 minutes long. Luckily for me, I don't have to as there's actually already a video on YouTube in which someone put the matching scene side by side. If you want to go check out the full reference, there will be a link in the description. <laughs> Number 4. Voodoo Glow Skulls So I'm just going to keep this entry short as I don't really think there is much to explain. Voodoo Glow Skulls is an American ska punk band formed in 1988 in Riverside, California. Their first album, titled Who Is This Is, was released on January 11th, 1994, and features Krillin on the cover wearing the same Saiyan armor that he wore on Namek. 
However, this was later censored in the 2012 digital release, completely removing Krillin's face. Now keep in mind, there are a lot of musical artists out there who have made references to Dragon Ball, but I was actually kind of surprised that they decided to include it on their main cover. I mean, that's just asking to get sued. Then again, this album came out even before I was born, so who really knows? Maybe back then, copyright laws weren't so strict. Number 3. Big Citrus Gohan Speaking of copyright infringement, this next entry is going to be very similar to the last. So I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the drink Big Citrus, it's like an orange punch from what I could tell that is made and mostly sold over in Mexico. They even created a version just for kids, so you know this stuff has to be pretty good. Well apparently someone working at the company was in a big rush or was a really big fan of Dragon Ball, as one of the company's advertisements includes a character that looks very similar to Kid Gohan. And I mean very similar, like legit it looks like the guy in charge of creating the ad just copied over the original and was like, oh yeah, this is mine. But I guess we can never really know for sure, I mean it could have all just been coincidence. So I'll leave these two pictures here for you to decide. Number 2. Steven Universe now, Steven Universe is known for including all sorts of references in it, many of which point to Japanese anime and manga. And Dragon Ball is no exception, obviously, having added things like scatters, long power-ups, and outfits that resemble DB characters. However, there is one nod that I found to be quite interesting. In the episode Nightmare Hospital, you can see the name Dr. Jiro written on one of the door plates in the background. Written directly underneath his name is Patient 20, most likely a nod to the fact that he is also known as Android 20. Oh no, we're trapped. We don't have to be. Number 1. WWE WrestleMania Okay, I lied about earlier, this one is my favorite on this list. So there is an American wrestler by the name Xavier Woods, who on more than one occasion has expressed his love for the Dragon Ball series. At WWE WrestleMania 32, he and his trio called The New Day entered the ring wearing Saiyan armor. The best part of it all is that they did so jumping out of a giant cereal box, so yeah, I don't know what was up with that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any footage of them wrestling in the anime attire, but still, you have to admit, you really didn't expect to find an entry like this on this list. And there you have it guys, 10 references to Dragon Ball Z hidden in other works. Like I said, I was kinda confused on how I wanted to make this video, so there will probably be one or two more in the future which will cover the rest of the references. Hopefully you guys did find this video interesting and learned something new, if you did I would appreciate it if you could drop me a like and comment the word Saiyan down below to let me know you made it to the end. Also let me know what other anime series you would like me to make a video on or any anime recommendations that you may have for me. And I just want to give a quick shout out to my boy Rokada for creating this awesome new art for my channel. I highly recommend you guys go check out his stuff which will be linked in the description. Let them know who sent you. Also a big thank you to everyone who chooses to support me over on Patreon. If you guys would like to pledge for some cool rewards there will also be a link in the description for that. But yeah with that being said guys I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.